Hey guys, so today we have a new update on the current sets or the future sets of Magic and no surprise to anyone, we are going back to Ravnica. It seems like we just came from Ravnica, but nonetheless we are going back. Uh, what is important to note here is the fact that all three of these sets will be Ravnica, Guild of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, and a third set that will also be Ravnica based. Ravnica is a great plane, but I don't know if we have to go back every few years. And the return to Ravnica sold so well because it was a fun time for many players like Ravnica, Dissension. It was a good time. And Magic. Magic was growing. The set was very powerful. I like that they are going back to what's working but i wish they were slightly more creative it seems like they got lazy with the master sets and i'm not the only one who believes this i'm actually going to show you the video the video you should watch the video it is probably the most cringy video i've ever seen uh, it is poorly scripted poorly acted and overall quite confusing confusing as to why they, they don't actually use real magic players like, I'm pretty sure these people don't play Magic. No offense to them, but maybe go with, like, some people who do, I guess. Anyway, so we have our new Ravnica's. And like it or dislike it, they are redesigning all of the guilds. Uh, Simic has been, is being criticized the most. Uh, Simic is kind of this fun EDHE guild. Now, it looks less fun. But uh, we have Rakdos. Uh, Rakdos is all about the carnival and games and barns. What's that? Uh, the circus, right? So I like it. I like the new design. Uh, the video is definitely not a good, not doing a good service to the guilds. Uh, it makes it seem like. They ran out of ideas and they're just kind of rehashing everything again. So I don't mind going back to Ravnica. I just think it's a little much with all the master sets, which are pure 100% reprints. Anthologies, which is 100% reprints. Not even like reprinting just the card, but reprinting the whole concept. Um, and we also have Core Set, which will have reprints. As we've seen from the quote cards that were spoiled, uh, they are just reprints. Maybe there's new cards, but the large majority of the cards will be reprints. And we have Jace Spellbook. Even the new products are just reprints. Like these spell, uh, what is it, Spellbook products. Uh, those cards have always existed. So I feel like, you know, all this money that should be going to R&D and that should be going to develop new cool cards are being just, uh, I don't think... I think going back to Ravnica is quite lazy, uh, given this time period. Maybe we go back in another four years or something, but 2018, we're going back right away. And we, we, we just never left. Uh, so magic straight running out of ideas, just rehashing other sets. This is why new sets don't excite me anymore. Just slightly different cards. I mean, that's absolutely right. Instead of a 2-2 two -two for 2, we get a 2-2 two -two or Vigilance for 2. I mean... When you look at it, the cards are exactly the same. They just have a slightly different mechanic. And sometimes they're exactly identical, actually. I'm sure these people are fine in real life. However, they come off horribly scripted. Thank, thank God they're finally showing Ravnica as a more normal, livable place. I can't, can't wait for Guilds of Ravnica. So this sounds pretty positive. It sounds like people are excited. And I am excited for Ravnica. It... I was my freshman year uh, at NYU where Dissension came out, and that was my favorite. That was the set that I played more of and drafted more of than any other set, mainly because you're in college, you have student loans, you have disposable income from loans, right? Uh, I wish someone told me about that earlier. Uh, again, I don't have student debt, just FYI, but uh, I did accumulate it through time and through drafting Magic cards. I'm, I'm sure that didn't help my student loan situation at the time but yeah i'm um 
you know, so here's the people who are excited. Now I'm going to show you the people who are not so excited. This is a um, this is a video with that should be mostly thumbs up because you're talking about a new set. You're hyping up the new set. The fact that it is has 208 thumbs down is kind of strange. I would expect most casual players to be very excited about Ravnica. It is uh, repeating. So it's kind of like Transformers. Why do we have 8 million Transformer movies? Because people still go see it. Are the Transformer movies getting better? No, they're getting worse. But you know what? They can do that because people will still pay and see it. Now, I'm shocked that they went with this video. Like, you really have to watch it. I can't explain it to you. But the video was just, like, very fake. Um, it was fake people talking about a game that they may or may not play. And I know a lot of you saying, oh, these are big personalities. They play magic. They play magic. To me, as an old school player, you guys have seen my collection or and you will see more of it in the coming days. That's when I played Magic. And it's not that I'm, I think I'm better because I played when I was younger or I played since beta. It's just that like I can't understand these relatively new Magic players and why they're, I, maybe they're being pushed because casual players are like, oh, cool, they're new too. I'm new as well. But a lot of times like, it just comes off as fake to me. It's the same thing as like MTG Finance where supposedly these people have been investing in so many great financial spikes and they're so clever with their articles, right? And their paywalls. But then like they never show you their collection because I truly believe they don't own half the stuff they say they own. And they're like, oh, I bought a hundred of this card, but I can't afford the camera and my phone doesn't take a picture of it. And I can write a 800 word article, but I won't take a picture and put the picture into the article. I'll just use someone else's picture. Like, so that, this is what the video comes off to me personally as. Return to cringe, too much cringe for my taste. Cringe is over 900, 9,000. This sounds really scripted. The cringe is off the charts. I work in marketing, I own my own marketing agency, and some of the marketing Wizard of Coast has done recently has been shocking to me because their core demographic is males between, I assume, 14 to 32, or something like that. These videos are not like male-centric. Um, I get, oh, we should include all people. We, I, I get that. I mean, come on. You don't need to say that a million times for me to be agree with you, right? I think we all agree with it. But the way that it's presented is from a very... A normal Magic player is not going to watch this video and say, yeah, this gets me hyped for this set. They're going to watch this video and then see the artwork, see the design, see the redesign, I guess. Hear about people's experiences and, you know, guilds that it's not relatable to them and be like, hmm, that was not a great video. That is a crazy video. So here we have two cards that are spoiled. Pure Imaginative Rascal. <laughs> we have little kids in this set. I know Gideon was a little kid, but I mean, my gosh. We are super inclusive of little kids now, I guess. Especially judges and store owners. Anyway, I, okay, I regress. Uh, to a green partner with the imaginary fiend, if one or more counters would be put onto a permanent you control, that many plus one of each of those counters, that's pretty good. I like that. Double encounters or plus one encounters are always good. Free in a blue partner, whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, when it leaves the battlefield, draw a card for each plus one plus one counter on it. So it gets kind of big, kind of fast. But you need both of them in play, I assume. So Battle Bond is a two-headed giant format, if you didn't know. I'm not sure if anyone's going to buy it unless there's valuable cards in it. I'll put it this way. I'm not going to buy it unless there are valuable reprints in it. Or like cards that are super obvious that, oh, okay, this is a valuable card. I don't think anyone's going to buy this product. Like 
two-headed giant, like, it's one of those things that Reddit thinks is, is really awesome, but in real life, no one ever plays it. Like, I've never played it. I've never gone to a local game store that has offered it. Anyway, bye, guys.